Rebecca, tell us about this. We are going to to tell your story from a chronological point of view. We have uh, uh, Father Vicente Zamboa because he speaks Hausa. I don't know if I pronounced it right, uh, Father. Um, and he's going to be translating. He will be in charge of translating her testimonial, Rebecca's testimonial. So welcome, Father. Welcome, Rebecca. I would like you to, first of all, tell us how life was in your village before uh, Boko Haram arrived to your region. Where I was before Boko Haram kidnapped me was a good place. I farmed there with my family and we had enough to eat and drink before the coming of Boko Haram. What did your family do? What did you do with your husband? What did you do? How did you spend your days? What was a day like in your life with your husband and your two children at that time? Yena zuwa yayi aikin gona yana aikin albasa yana ka mana abinci muna ci muna sha muna zuwa coci namu komai to da gashi da boko haram suka zo kuma suka watar da mutane gaba daya I was living happily with my husband and my two kids before the coming of Boko Haram the major preoccupation of my husband and I was farming my husband cultivated a lot of onions, and from it we earned our livelihood. My husband was able to provide all that we needed before the coming of Boko Haram. Rebecca, que lo sepáis todos. I need you all to know that Rebecca um, and Vitro Zacharias had two children at that time when, unfortunately, Boko Haram entered the village. Their children were called Zacharias and Jonathan, and she will not tell us how her life has changed ever since that happened. They were farmers, they, they were merchants, and their day-to-day -day was easy, according to what Rebecca just told us. But unfortunately, on August 21st, 2014, although they had foreseen it, Rebecca and her husband decided to uh, separate from each other in order to avoid being kidnapped all at the same time. And she was held by Boko Haram. So, Rebecca, when Boko Haram reached the village, what happened? What what was the experience like? How how did Boko Haram manage to capture you and your children? Okay, the Sukazo me Sali Karfi Bier, the Rabbi Sukazo Grimo, say Suka far a quanter the Matani lie lie. Nick Madame in a feeling wanka, say Suka Chimini. Boko Haram came to my community around 5 p.m., which was in the evening, and they were killing people, lining people up and killing them one after the other. At the time they came to my community, I was in the bathroom, and it was my husband who alerted me on the arrival of Boko Haram into the community. To the suka same mu same gidane na kudwa zua seche maman maman zakaria gashi Boko Haram sunzo se ni manafita manafita gurimwanka. When the Boko Haram came into the community, my husband was doing something within the community and he rushed to the house to intimate me, to tell me what Boko Haram was doing in town. And as soon as he came in, 
I rushed out of the bathroom and started running. And my husband couldn't go with me because the Boko Haram were after him. To sai suka tara mutane sai na ce ma mai gida na gashi suna kashe mutane ka gudu sai ya dauki Zakaria I told my husband to run away because Boko Haram are killing people Sai da ya dauki Zakaria yana guduwa da shi sai suka fara zuba mishi uta suka fara Allah hakubar Allah hakubar gaba da suna dage da bindiga sama kai my husband ran away with my eldest child, Zakaria. As they were running, fleeing for their lives, the Boko Haram were busy shooting at them. But my husband could not continue with Zakaria. He had to leave Zakaria and run away. Sai na ce mishi ka yarda yaro din sai ni ya yarda shi. Ni kuma surga sun same ni da suka same ni. After my husband had fled for his dear life, the Boko Haram were already around me. They had captured me and covered my face with a veil. And one of them hit me with a gun on my cheeks. I lost some of my teeth. After they captured me, they made away with my two children, and they were shouting, Allah, Wakubar, God is great, God is great. And by the time they took me away, I discovered on the way that they were still killing people. They had captured a lot of people, and they were killing them one after the other. Sai na ce musu to ene ne za ku je da ni sai sun ce ai kin kafirce haka suka ce I asked them confidently where are you taking me to and they told me you are no longer a christian you are now a muslim you have been an infidel but from today you are a muslim Me sunan ki na ce sunana Rebecca ni What is my name my name is Rebecca to daga yau kin karba Muhammadu as from today you have Muhammad as your prophet kin zama Maryam your name is Maryam from today no longer Rebecca in kin kara ce sunan ki Rebecca za mu kashe ki if you ever say your name is Rebecca we will kill you immediately se sun dora min hanuna ta baya haka and they tied my hands se suna janiya kasa sun dadore min kafa when they tied my hands together they dragged me on the ground and i felt so bad about that i felt the pains of what they, the pains they were inflicting on me and I asked them, why are you doing this to me? I'm a Christian. I am of no use to you. So why bother yourselves about me? Please, could you leave me? And, and, she, and I continued to follow them into the forest. By the time I got to their camp in the forest, I saw many young girls who were younger than me. And they told, they asked me, my sister, what brought you here? This is a land of suffering. This is a land of pain. Why are you here? And I told them, it wasn't by my making that I am here. It was a Boko Haram that captured me from my community 
and brought me to this place. Father, esas niñas eran Father, those girls, Father, those girls, I was telling you, Father, those are the girls that Boko Haram had captured a few months previous in spring since she was captured in August. Those were the 200 girls that we currently still are looking for because 112 are still in the hands of terrorists. What was the what was the relationship that she had with those girls? Did she manage to talk to her during those two years? Um, how are those girls living right now? Because she spent time with those girls, those Boko Haram girls. How do these girls live this 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 life? How do these girls live in the hands of Boko Haram? Raiwan da suke yi a cikin jeji ana sa su aikin bota kuma an wanda ba zai doka miji ba sai dai wannan ya kwana da kai yau wannan ya kwana da kai jibi those ladies from my experience were subjected to a lot of torture they were treated as slaves because a good number of them are christians while in the camp they were forced to get married to some of the Boko Haram fighters. And if they dare refused, any of the Boko Haram who came back from the battlefront slept with them, raped them. That was the experience with them. Say, Suka Chemini, in B Abunda Sike Yina, in B Yamatan, in Jiyamatan, and say, Nacheni Bazan Bira Iwankuba, Nacheni Ina de Mijina. Ina da yara na nzo nbi adin wana nache bazan biba. Se suka kwa kwa che yara na se suka saseer dasu. Like some of the Chibok girls were forced to marry some of the Boko Haram fighters, I was also asked by the Boko Haram insurgents to get married to one of them. But I told them I cannot because I am already a married person. I have my husband and I'm not comfortable with that. And immediately, they made away with my children. I spent all the years serving them as a slave, doing a lot of hard labor, involved in a hard, in a hard labor while in the camp with Boko Haram. Say suka karba yaro na me suna Jonathan din sun ce da shike ba zan bi addinin su ba a ciki nayi shakara da ina aikin bota ina aikin wahala gurin su sai suka karba Jonathan din sun sami ne a ciki ruwa da safe Zakariya kuma sun sayar da shi ni kuma da yamma sai suka bani miji as a consequence of my refusal to adhere to their instructions they took my youngest child, namely Jonathan, and threw into the river, and he drowned to death. How old was Jonathan then? How old was Jonathan? He was about two, three years. He was very young. And how old was his how old was his elder brother? Zakaria, the eldest child I had, was about four years when I was abducted by the insurgents. Estaba su hermano delante. Was his brother um, there when they drowned um, Jonathan? Was, was his brother in front of this action? Mm. At the time my youngest child, Jonathan, was thrown into the river, the eldest was in there, uh, Zakaria. He had gone away with him to some part of the camp.
When they threw Jonathan into the river, I was crying, screaming, and I went into the river, and I discovered I was almost drowning. I was very hopeful that Jonathan was going to come up from the bed of the river, but he never showed up. Until the same day in the evening, they forced me to get married to one of the fighters. And they asked me to comply with all they are going to tell me from this period. In aquel momento, ella. At that time, she refused to get married, as she just told us. She refused to marry one of the combatants. And, and since making her suffer was not enough, they decided to torture her even more. They raped her. So, Rebecca, I don't want to really dig deep into this because I'm sure that that this causes you as much pain as the as the death of your son. Tell us in more general lines what the situation of women was in the camp under Boko Haram's control. Rayon <laughs> Halin number, Halin de Deba. Nin send an Aisha car of Duta read the sooner. The clock watching the Zasusani Sala Sena Kira Yaya so Katamichini Shine Chechenia Hanus. The girls, the other girls in the camp, were subjected to physical and mental torture because some of them refused to convert to Islam. They were placed under hard labor and they, were, they weren't given enough food to eat. If they wanted to eat, they had to steal from the store to feed themselves. That was the experience. It wasn't very easy with them also. And in the evening, normally they will call all of us to pray as the Muslims do. But whenever I squat to pray like the Muslims, because I'm not convinced about it, I recited the rosary using my fingers since I didn't have one with me. Rebecca. Rebecca, you had to stay there for a very long time and then one day they asked you to wear a bomb so that you could perform an attack. This is something that Islamic terrorists do with women and children, very young children. Tell us, how was that experience? How did you manage to escape that? And how did that somehow be of um, be advantageous to you? The situation that they proposed. Da mani tun farko da babana da mamana suka halace ni ina tare da Yesu Almasihu suna ambatawa kwa da daya daga cikin mata din suke fita to amma wayan da suna fita din iri mata yansu da sun kai kansu wannan ne shine suke fita da bam amma ni yanzu tun naje gurin su ko sun zo kaina za su ce in yi kaza kaza yanzu wani ya tambaye ni karatun su ma zan iya yi musu mai kyau to da zance bam nasu din Hankali na bai doka cewa zan bi da bomb number kawai Allah ubangiji ne ya taimake ni 
I was brought up in a very good Christian home, a Catholic family. And I was taught by my parents how to value the life of another human being. When I was confronted with the issue of suicide bombing, killing myself and then killing other people, I wasn't convinced about that. And I was not ready to go into that, even if it will mean losing my life. Rebecca consigue escapar una huida. So Rebecca, you managed to escape, but in that sense, you couldn't just escape on your own. You had God with you, and you managed to escape Boko Haram's control with your two children, with uh, your eldest, with whom you had been captured, and with the child who was the fruit of the rape that you suffered during your stay with Boko Haram. Rebecca, do you feel sadness? Do you feel hatred? Do you feel um, that this is a traumatic experience? What do you feel? What do you feel at the time? Okay. Okay. One be some co me bafa Mudoka say na doka Christopher and say na go yeshi same kakama hai. As a human being, I didn't feel happy when I was fleeing, fleeing with Christopher. I didn't feel happy fleeing with Christopher. As a human being, I felt pain that I had to go through all this process, being raped and given birth to a child, a male child, for one of the Boko Haram. So I kept the child in the bush, I kept Christopher, and I was ready to run with only Zakaria. But Zakaria told me something that touched me. Mom, mommy, two of us came here with my brother. We came here, we are two. Zakaria, I, Zakaria, and Jonathan. Jonathan is no longer here with us and I am alone now. Please take this child so that we will be two as we were before. Cristobal, in Castellano, se traduce... Christopher Cristobal, who is the, the bearer of, of Christ, what a beautiful name for this baby who was the result of a rape, of such a disgrace, what Rebecca had to live. Rebecca, you haven't lost your faith. You you kept yourself in your Christian faith. You did not turn to Islam. But um, I, I guess that at some point you actually felt like listening to them and at least saying some of their prayers, saying what they wish to hear. <laughs> I was uh, taught how to read the Quran in Arabic. And even now, I can recite some parts of the Quran because I was forced to do that. And I certain times had to recite the Quran and say, Allah, Akbar, pray like them for my life to be saved. That is so, so amazing, Rebecca. Let's get out of this sadness, Rebecca, and let's go back to joy. Let's go back to the joy of life with your two children. Let's go back to your village where you managed to, to return to your husband. How do you now live? What's your life right now with your husband, Zakaria, and your two children? 
How's your life in in your village, in that village that you used to live in before all of this nightmare came to happen? At the time, I dramatically, miraculously escaped from Boko Haram captivity. Christopher was about eight months, but now he is three years, and I am so convinced that it wasn't by my power that I escaped from their captivity. It was Jesus Christ that assisted me. And it is still this same Jesus Christ that encourages me, his words in the scripture. Especially each time I recite the, the Lord's Prayer, our Father, he tells us to forgive one another. I have forgiven them and I'm living happily with my family. And the joy of the whole thing is that my husband accepted me happily, joyfully, and he has come to accept Christopher as a child coming from God. Está claro con mirar. Yes, we can see that just by looking at you. Just by looking at Rebecca, you can see that God is within her. God is with God is within her and it is now for her to ask for a wish. What would you ask God? What would you ask God today? I am very grateful to God. I cannot thank him enough. All I pray God to do me, to do for me, is to give me and my children and my husband good health of mind and body so that together we will continue to struggle and keep the family going. Okay, in our good year, I had the suit in the Ghana Siki. Narganai Shakara, Biu, Yanzi in our good year, Allah, in our Roko, Allah, I had the Bishop Namu Takula, the Ni, Tafani, Abinchi, Tafani Sutra, Hartayo, in our Hanun Bishop, Shiyake, Bani, Kome, the Kome, and Namanai Farinchiki, the Kunda Kuna, no Kuma in our Roko, Allah, Allah, Ubengiji, Tamakeku. I am very grateful to all of you. It is people like you who invite us to share our stories that keep us going, your prayers and the assistance you give to us. The bishop has been of great help to me. Till today, the bishop still takes care of my needs. He comes to visit me once in a while in my family house and he prays for me. I'm very grateful to the bishop. And she is advising all of us to continue to be faithful to our Christian faith. Let us not throw the Christian faith away. It is said that what has not reached you has not passed you yet. And so she is asking that we hold on to our prayer life 
and it is only Jesus Christ that can save us. Thank you. Akwela kwa chinde sika shiga chikimi eduguri na doka Kristova na kai church na chef bishop na chef bazar rike wana yaroba gashi na gudu Allah ya tamakeni na fita chikin jeji na kuma gashi na zo chikin gari boko haram sun sake zo sun kashe mutane na chef bazar rike Kristova ba sai bishop na mu yace wannan yaro rube ka zai girma ta hanyar Yesu almasihu gashi ina farin ciki yo Kristova yana aduwa sosai yana kira sunan Allah in ka fada mishi yayi kaza zai yi anan ma farin ciki ne wani yanzu ka ce ya rike Christopher nan na ko minti 30 ma ba zai rike ba amma sai godiya ga Allah gashi ina rike da shi bishop yace in yi hakuri yace wannan yaro zai girmata hanyar Yesu almasihu in my degree where i am living with my family we have pockets of attacks from time to time and whenever especially when I came back freshly from Boko Haram captivity. And there was an attack in Maiduguri. It reminded me of what I went through in the forest. And on one of those occasions, when Boko Haram attacked a community very close to where I am living in Maiduguri, something, a voice said to me, I should not take Christopher again. I went to the bishop and told him, these attacks remind me constantly of my experiences. But the bishop said, no, this Christopher you are carrying may grow up to be a very useful child in the future. And I am very grateful now that Christopher can talk and he can recite some prayers in the Catholic faith. Ella nos agradece a nosotros. No sé qué, porque no sé qué tiene que agradecerme. I don't know what she has to be thankful to us for, but we thank her for being a strong woman, for being able to survive to these terrible circumstances, and we hope she has enough strength and courage as to tell the whole world what she's gone through so that the world will know the terror that you live while being in the hands of Islamic terrorism so that we we are all aware about the things that are happening in this country so that we can pray, so that our governments are urged to participate and to intervene and for the UN to really consider the situation of persecuted Christians worldwide. So thank you, Rebecca, for your testimony. Thanks to you and to people like you.